uh, welcome to Kifira, even virtually. Um, uh, so we chose this picture, which is actually, we're sitting on a bench. This is on a hill on top of uh, Kapsali Beach in, uh, in the south uh, part of, uh, of the island of Kithira. Um, uh, in the background, uh, you can see like a little, let's say, <clears throat> um, part of land which is called the Hitra uh, in, in, in the, like, in, <clears throat> in front of the, the picture. And we're actually sitting in a, uh, in a place where you can see um, not just uh, not just the beach and the sea, but also you can see the um, uh, the main village of the island, which is called Hora, and the castle. So we just chose a, a natural let's say, environment to uh, to to have our uh, beverage today. Um, <coughs> excuse me if I'm coughing a bit. Um, uh, so um, I don't know if it is okay, Anna, already to start with the presentation and share my screen, or if there is something yeah, else that. Uh, yeah. Ahead, yeah. Okay, perfect. So <clears throat> today, um, um, myself, um, can you see the presentation? Yes, we see. Perfect. Uh, so today, um, myself, together with. Uh, uh, Rigas uh, from uh, from Kithira, we're going to uh, to give you um, a short presentation of a few things that are happening on the island. Um, I'm just going to start with an introductory presentation, mostly um, uh, what we have done and building upon the Smart Rural 21 project. And then Rigas is going to, uh, to talk more about some other activities that are taking uh, place on the island. Um, <clears throat> So let's see. And now you can see the second slide, I guess. Um, <clears throat> just a brief overview of the presentation. Um, basically, we're going to just uh, uh, give you a brief introduction about Kithira, the key challenges and assets uh, for the island, uh, and how we build on this, the smart village strategy with the main building on the main objectives, and uh, of course, uh, with the help of the, uh, of the community and the participation. Uh, the different smart actions that they took place, uh, implemented and planned ones. Um, the support of the Terra program that uh, uh, um, Rigas is actually running on the island with, a, uh, with the help of some organizations that we will mention later, and the Kithiria and Olive Oil as a uh, 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 protected destination of origin. Um, just a brief introduction about Kithira. So the island, uh, the island of Kithira, or otherwise, as we call it, Sirigo, is actually li lies in the, in the crossroad of three, uh, three seas, the Ionian, the Aegean, and the Cretan Sea. Uh, Kithira is actually characterized by its large number of settlements, uh, and the population is around 4,000 inhabitants. Um, there are many small villages scattered throughout the island, and um, uh, the island economy is also is based on uh, a rural life and tourism, um, while many locals are actually employed in, um, in services and trade and other public organizations uh, on the island. Uh, we also we should also mention here that uh, uh, in the municipality of Kithira, also the the island of Antikithira uh, belongs with a well-known uh, um, uh, mechanism of Antikithira. Um, the aging uh, population and the migration of uh, young people uh, for educational and other work um, opportunities is actually the main challenge for the island. Uh, due to the geographical location, uh, Kithira also doesn't have um, uh, good access to markets as its uh, nearest coast is actually two hours away uh, by boat. So um, it's facing some difficulties with transport leaks and um, these are actually uh, kind of restricted. Um, Kithira though presents uh, a lot of um, different advantages and opportunities. Uh, one of them and the main one is actually the unique natural environment, uh, which is the most important asset for the island. Um, along with the co uh, social consciousness and uh, the involvement of the, the locals uh, in order to improve the island uh, at cultural, economic and social level. <coughs> um, the overall objective um, 
for the Smart Villa strategy as we uh, built it uh, for Kithra and developed it for Kithra was actually, is actually to keep the youth on the island uh, by creating the appropriate opportunities for them um, to, to live and work on the island. Uh, some other uh, objectives are actually to improve the agriculture and promote the, uh, the local production, um, improve the environmental sustainability, uh, support entrepreneurial activities, uh, increase the quality tourism that Rigas is going to talk more about later on and show you some nice examples, and also improve um, uh, services in possible in, uh, at all levels. Um, this is just an explanation of how we actually developed the strategy. So Kithra was a pre-selected village uh, for the project, and uh, we built on a clear innovation logic, um, building upon the challenges and assets I just uh, uh, mentioned earlier. Um, and of course, it didn't, it didn't start from the scratch, but it built an existing strategy. Uh, and of course, it had the clear links to other strategies on um, in, in different like on all administrative levels and um, and of course um, a lot of um, a lot of uh, stakeholders were actually involved in this um, <clears throat> so as we already mentioned uh, the main advantage of Kithira uh, in terms of the strategy development it's actually its citizens and uh, we have a lot of active uh, associations and organizations on the island so many local stakeholders, uh, people involved in the local government, uh, but also various unions and associations operating on the island um, uh, responded to our call and the answer to our questions and the help provided information of the help uh, to create the strategy for, uh, for the island. Um, here we can see um, the main like smart actions uh, implemented uh, and planned for uh, for uh, Kithra for the island. Uh, basically, these are in order to improve the agriculture and promote the local production um, on the island. Uh, so you can see here some uh, let's say um, smaller uh, actions: the introduction of uh, smart farming uh, technologies uh, in Kithira. Um, the improvement of collaboration between producers uh, under an umbrella of existing agricultural associations uh, on the island, and of course the introduction of standards and certificates for, uh, for local products such as the olive oil and honey, uh, which are uh, very famous on the island, in order to get a protected uh, or actually work towards a protected destination of origin for these products. Um, here you can see um, uh, the Terra Kitheria, uh project that is actually running on the island and we tried uh, um, just to give to support and give some complementary expertise. So um, uh, Terra Kitheria is actually, it's called the, the full title Sustainable Agriculture in Kithira, um, it is, uh, which is uh, actually um, responsible for promoting the Kithirian olive oil. Uh, supporting producers and uh, in general uh, the economic and let's say social uh, revitalization of the primary sector on, uh, on the island. Uh, in order to achieve this goal, um, feedback and scientifically documented precision uh, farming and certification system for uh, olive cultivation is actually being developed. Um, here we can see uh, a, few, uh, a few points about Terrakitheria. Um, uh, it's actually trying to empower olive oil producers, promote the high uh, quality of uh, kithirian olive oil and uh, uh, conserve uh, traditional agricultural landscapes and on farm biodiversity. We can see here the, the main ingredients, let's say, for the project. And the project is actually, the program is actually uh, implemented by the Kithirian Foundation for Culture and Development and the Mediterranean Institute for, for Nature and Anthropos. Uh, Rigas is actually representing both of these uh, organizations uh, today. Uh, and in collaboration with uh, uh, two main agricultural cooperatives of Kithira, the one from Livadi and uh, one from the Olive uh, Cooperative of Potamos. Uh, and again, with collaboration with a couple of universities, the University of Fijian and the University of Patras um, that are supporting this, uh, these actions. Um, um, here you can see the different steps of the process. Uh, 
uh, for farmers, it's a five-step process, application, use of tools, um, implementation of criteria, auditing and certification uh, in order to create a, a PDO pro product. And um, building on this program, uh, a few workshops actually took place online. Uh, so in order to introduce the smart farming technologies on the island, um, uh, some of these workshops took uh, place the previous uh, period. Um, and on this, uh, we actually um, supported uh, this action. And during the, uh, the data collection on, uh, on field biodiversity monitoring that took place on the island, um, we also supported this collection with some data collection um, and enriched the data set uh, with some data collection uh, uh, with drones uh, by the Agricultural University of Athens um, uh, as an implementation of, of the strategy for Kithia. Um, that was a very quick overview of the actions that took place uh, on the island and uh, an introduction actually for, uh, for the next presentation of Origa. So he's going to give you more information for the island and show you uh, nicer pictures actually than what I had in my presentation. Thank you very much, everyone. <clears throat> and apologies for the voice. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, Katerina, for the pass. Um, I, I don't know if uh, Anna, if you want to do some introduction, or either I just go on with my presentation. As you wish. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, you you can mention your role in this Kithera project, but yeah, then go ahead with the presentation. Yes. All right, so my name is Liga Zafiriu. So I'm going to show you some, um, uh, today I'm going to share a story uh, from Kithira Island and how we made a lot of uh, uh, smaller projects and bigger projects in order to develop Kithira Island as an adventure uh, destination. Uh, I'm working as a project manager for the Mediterranean Institute for Nature and Anthropos and the Kithira Foundation, as Katerina already mentioned. and. Uh, Today, I'm going to go very briefly. I'm going to uh, show you only the headlines. I'm not going to go into detail about e every single uh, work we did and every single action um, so that you get an idea and later on we can discuss about it. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go very briefly uh, just that we have some kind of collective brainstorming. Uh, so um, I like st starting with this photo uh, because uh, this photo has been taken uh, on April. By the way, it's before the COVID-19. Uh, so in this photo, we can see uh, a group of Dutch hikers. So people are coming from the Netherlands and they are walking on a restored old trail that before we started the project didn't exist or existed, but it was underneath the vegetation. So it was not visible and it was not operational. And, but, uh, and this is actually the first uh, trail in Europe that uh, was certified with this certification called the Green Flag Trails. Um, and uh, uh, for me, it's also kind of uh, also sentimental uh, value of this photo because, uh, you know, it's in a place uh, I was, I'm related to. So in the background, you can see Kapsali where we are actually, uh, our background photo is, but from a different uh, point of view. And uh, after that, you can see the castle of Hora. Uh, and this is actually the first trail I worked on, so it has also a personal kind of uh, value. Uh, so this is, this is the result. This is what we have achieved to bring people totally off season and to give life to our old, old traditional roads, let's say, the trails of the island. Um, so now I'm going to tell you how we did it. But before that, uh, I just want to mention that uh, this presentation is four parts. The first is generally about tourism. Uh, then I'm going to uh, talk about the methodology, the syncreate approach, uh, then what we did, actually how we built the destination, and then some of the results. So uh, in, for tourism, I'm not going to go at all into details. I just want to mention that it's a very powerful force for transforming uh, actually every locality on the planet. And it accounts for one in four of all new jobs in all of the economy globally. 
Of course, this is pre-COVID-19, but according to all predictions, we're going to go back to that uh, level in 2023-24. Uh, so I just want to mention that it's very, very relevant for all smart villages, tourism. But the point is not tourism itself, but how we develop tourism. Because more tourism not necessarily means uh, something better for uh, smart villages. I just want to mention that uh, uh, Greece is very, very touristic country and it accounts 20, 20.8% of the Greek economy, which is uh, a very high figure. And um, the Mediterranean is also the birthplace of mass tourism that developed after the 1950s. So uh, there's a long history of uh, developing mass tourist destinations in the Mediterranean, which uh, progressively has led to over tourism, uh, which uh, usually we say about the negative impacts on the localities of too much tourism, that is over tourism. But we forget to, to, to mention that the tourist experience is also degraded uh, because the services are uh, worse, waiting times, the, the destination itself is not in a, in a good uh, state, is uh, degraded and so on and so forth. Uh, and this is uh, one picture of uh, in Crete where locals actually rise up um, uh, for, for, for this over tourism development, uh, which is also very much explained by this graph uh, where increasing number of tourism uh, changed the sentiment in the local community from the state of euphoria in the beginning with the first tourist to uh, the states of antagonism where uh, tourists and locals kind of uh, antagonize uh, have conflicts over limited resources in the space. Um, not to mention the high high living uh, prices, uh, the, the, the rents and so on and so forth. So that was very briefly in the room we op uh, talking a little bit about the room we operate. And now I'm gonna tell you about uh, how we approach uh, our project. Uh, so uh, I want to talk about this in create approach that is uh, developed by Medina. So uh, this approach actually uh, tries to put uh, cultural heritage into, into the, uh, uh, developing projects. So if you have a, a, a nature conservation project, how do you put cultural elements and, how, uh, and focusing on how they interact? So nature and culture together in one project. So it's a kind of more holistic approach uh, that helped us also to to have a, a more uh, integrated approach in how we develop uh, Kithira as an adventure destination. Um, and also, uh, this is where Kithira lies. So it's in, um, in Eastern Mediterranean and actually it's the gateway between the East and Central Mediterranean between Peloponnese and Crete in the Southern Greece. Um, Kithira is also, because of its location, is a melange of many different influences, Aegean, Ionian, Cretan, Peloponnesian, Venetian, because we had 600 years of Venetian rule. And uh, uh, now uh, I'm not going to go into detail on that. I just want to mention that uh, we looked in very uh, detail in the cultural and uh, natural heritage of the island. And also the living traditions, as you see here, uh, uh, summer festivity on the island. Uh, I, I can talk <laughs> uh, for a long time about uh, the natural heritage and the cultural heritage of Kithira with many monuments, 830 plant species, a lot of protected areas and so forth. And this is one of the, uh, the, the very uh, useful tools that we have developed. Uh, it's called the IMNC, where you can put all these elements from, nat uh, from nature and culture together and see how they interact. So as a manager of the project, you can prioritize uh, what, uh, what to focus on. And in the case of Kithira, we decided to focus on tourism. Why? Because tourism actually affected all the critical areas of the island, whether it's water resources, uh, rural development, and so on and so forth. So that was, uh, we considered tourism as an opportunity and a threat. And that's why we, we started developing a project about uh, tourism. And uh, by uh, talking a little bit more in detail about uh, tourism on Kithira, as it, is, as it was actually a few years back, uh, Kithira is a developing destination. It has a steady growth, uh, but it, is, uh, uh, this, uh, it has this conventional 3S model, you know, sea, sand, and sand. So it's more summer tourism with a very short 
tourist uh, period. It's only four weeks. Um, and it's concentrated along the coast. So we wanted to change all that. And we believe that the next five to 10 years for Kithira is going to be critical. And we hope to, to put Kithira into more uh, sustainable development pathways. And we took into account also that the very, the very sea and sand tourism is going to change because, uh, because of climate change. There is uh, more and more visitor discomfort, thermal discomfort, a lot of natural disasters in the, in the summertime, like wildfires that affected also, also Kithira in 2017. We had a big disaster on the island. So uh, the, very, the very summer tourism is going to change in the future. So we want to prepare. And uh, we looked more about adventure uh, tourism and we saw that it's already 30% of global tourism. So it's not a niche tourism or alternative tourism. It's actually part of the new tourism. We saw that uh, also um, uh, adventure tourism is much more effective for the local economy. So with, only with four adventure travelers, you can raise as much money as 96 cruise tourists. Why? Because of course, hikers and adventure travelers, they stay more days, they spend much more money, they're interested in local products and so on and so forth. And 65% stays in the local economy. So it's much more effective type of tourism. With less people, you do much more. And that's why we decided also to collaborate with all these uh, organizations, the municipality of Kithira, the local, uh, the domestic estate management committee, we have a local management, land management system on Kithira. And of course, Medina and the Kithirian Foundation, and now I'm going to just tell you the headlines, what we did, what we built. Um, we decided to work on trails. Now here you can see a restored old trail that we consider to be a green infrastructure for sustainable tourism. And by that, we bring people to the nature and culture of Kithira. It's, uh, it's, it's about the, the, the local identity of the locals, you know, because these were the old roads, so they, they have this... Uh, this very important value for the local community. We support sustainable li livelihoods and so on. Uh, this is the trails network as it is at the moment. We have 11 trails of 100 kilometers. Um, we have one via Ferrata, a lot of points of interest that we registered in a scientific way. We did a lot of innovations and we have already the next phase of the project. So another six, 68 kilometers. Uh, we put a lot of effort in trail design. Uh, these are the trail, trailhead signs that we use. Uh, this is the scientific registration of the cultural and natural heritage uh, sites. So, uh, and, and this is the ethnographic study we did. We did uh, almost 60 in-depth interviews with elderly locals. So we got thousands of pages of material that we used in order to develop stories like this one. So on your left, you can see a hole in the ground, but it's actually not a hole in the ground, but it's a lime kiln where people used to do is the remain of the lime kiln where people used to do lime in the past. And now you can see the story on the interactive maps on our website. And actually you can take the story with you by using the application you developed. So it's a kind of a storytelling along the trails. So for us, it's very important that the travelers get a deeper experience of the place and not just uh, randomly roaming around the island. Um, this is the action we did in order to certify some of our trails, as I talked in the beginning. This is the Via Ferrata. So we put some infrastructure so you can go into one of the most impressive, impressive canyons on the island uh, safely. Uh, also, we have, uh, uh, we have developed uh, infrastructure in seven canyons on the island. So, and this is the cover of a book we published about canyoning on Kithira. And now the new project with the mountain biking routes on the island, uh, we have a plan for 182 kilometers, and this is currently under construction. Uh, uh, we looked also, because the water resources are very precious on the island, and actually they are getting depleted. We also, along one of the trails we developed, uh, we, we revived an old technique of water management, which is small dams uh, that are very useful for agriculture, uh, for, for animal husbandry uh, and uh, they support biodiversity. And of course, the main function is that uh, the, the water has more time to infiltrate in the, in the soil. So by that, we replenish the aquifer. And this is how it looked, the action, uh, when we were building those small dams along the stream. 
And this is, uh, you can visit that, it's next to the trail and actually you can also read the story of what is a microdown and how it works. So it has this also educational dimension. Uh, we did a lot of things about marketing. I'm not gonna talk uh, at all about that. I'm just gonna mention that we have two uh, twinnings, one with Japan and one, uh, one with Bruce Trail of Canada, which is one of the most iconic trails on, 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 on the, in the world. And some more innovative things like this uh, one-stop shop at Kithiras Airport, where you can get all the, you can see some videos from the trails and you can get more material. And, and I'm gonna go to the last part now that I think is maybe the most important, which is about the results and what things we do for community engagement. Uh, we have uh, everything we, we are doing so far is by collaborating with different organizations either knowledge institutions and universities, but also local businesses, uh, local associations, and so on and so forth. And here is a collaborative uh, event we have been doing the last years before COVID, and now we started again. In the winter, we, we, we actually go walk uh, the trails with the local community, and so far we have done more than 80 free guided tours uh, on the trails with great participation. This is a very new initiative it's a championship uh, that is running for locals in the winter. It's about mountain biking and trail running. Uh, this is a campaign we did by putting together 23 organizations in order to uh, make it very visible that the trails are our own heritage and we should protect them. Uh, these are some actions for vocational training. So this is about uh, developing tour guides with an interpretive approach. Uh, we put also the local community in action uh, with this uh, trail adoption project that we have. So uh, local association businesses can adopt a trail and they uh, take care of it every spring. So now in this period, we have this uh, uh, maintenance work uh, all along these 100 kilometers of trails. This is the process we use for maintenance. I'm not going to go into that. And this is the result. So this is a, uh, these are hikers. It's a hiking association from Southern Greece. And this is, uh, for me, I just want to, I put this in order to tell you that it is, a, what they said to us, uh, actually their leader, that it is a reason for us to come back soon so, so that we walk the rest of the trails. It's very important. We create, uh, by, by having this amazing experience on the island, we create repeaters, people that are coming back. Uh, and that's for us very, very important. This is a very quick look at some uh, of the economic uh, parts. I'm not sure if I have time to go into that, but uh, we want to just uh, uh, to, to make the contrast between how small the investment is and how big the economic benefit is. So with the red color is the investment and with the blue color, the money that is being pumped into the local economy. Um, and uh, uh, the impact assessment we did last summer showed that uh, there are new jobs being developed on the island due to the, this project. Uh, some businesses reported 20 to 40 percent increase every year. Um, the, the tourist season is prolonged and we have been generally improving the profile of the destination uh, to, so that Kithra can diversify. Um, and for locals, that is equally important that they have an increased sense of awareness and local pride and a feeling of ownership of the trails. That's very important. And not to mention the health and recreation benefits. And uh, this is, uh, uh, with this slide, I want to say that we collaborate and we want to create this entrepreneurial ecosystem and to uh, actually uh, encourage young people to develop their own businesses. And we, are, we have been helping them a lot. And uh, uh, the, this ecosystem is very important because uh, we can attract younger people and it's, it's actually, it consists of many actors, entrepreneurs, youngsters, NGOs, local organizations, the municipality and so on. And uh, this is a, a way to, to co-create value. Uh, it's not just one business's uh, matter, it's everyone in the local economy. Um, and uh, the, the, the linkages are very important. So uh, in order to create these value chains, you have to collaborate and you create links between different businesses so that more of the added value stays in the local economy. It's very important. And we prioritize what the local community wants. Um, and closing, I just want to 
to, to mention what a project beneficiary mentioned to us, uh, that trails are not only a way to walk on, but it's a path to change your own way of thinking, your connection to nature, to your cal culture, it is knowledge. This is what one beneficiary told us. And by that, uh, I finish my presentation. Um, and I'm open to um, to questions and I hope it was useful for some of the villages to see what we are doing on Kithira. Thank you.